<clears throat> All right. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy Monday to you. What I wanted to do today was just talk about advocacy and activism a little bit. I wanted to try to throw some helpful hints and tips out there for anybody getting involved recently, which seems to be everybody. And it's not that I think that my tips or my methods are the superior way to do anything. I've just been doing this a real, real long time. Hey guys, it's Nick Grim Green back here. There's a lot of controversy going on right now with the bill that passed that gives the FDA control over tobacco products. I think the best thing that we can do right now is really portray these things in a positive light. These are literally, and I'm not exaggerating, even a little life-changing devices. And even back in 2009, I knew that this was going to be an uphill battle. And for the last 10 years, it has been almost a non-stop uphill battle. Hey everybody, Grim Green, uh, GrimGreen.com. I don't know if I could be more upset than I am right now at our federal government and the Food and Drug Administration. Just wanna do something real quick on the upcoming UK ban. Basically what's gonna happen uh, in June is that they're going to flat out ban anything containing nicotine. Which, believe me, the bans are coming. I mean, they're being legislated right now. These new FDA regulations have come out. This is officially official. The Food and Drug Administration is uh, asserting its authority over new tobacco products on Thursday. That's today. What the FDA has done is release their deeming regulations for tobacco and electronic cigarette or vapor product. And they're being very incredibly over-regulatory on vapor products. And if you watch the normal media that's coming out that you'll see in the newspapers and online and this, that, and the other, it's being framed in a certain way so that the public kind of goes, oh, well, that all sort of, yeah, makes a lot of sense. So I just wanted to pass along a few tips and tricks, maybe some helpful information that I've found helpful over the years. Number one, I've said this in vlogs in the past. I just, I'm just too close to this subject. I just get too emotional about it sometimes. We're just too angry and I am one of the biggest offenders of this and I know it. I get too emotionally invested in this. I get on my vlogs and I yell and I scream and I rant and I rave and I curse at uh, politicians and really that's not helping the conversation at all. It's really just helping me blow off steam. But when you're engaging with these politicians, whether that's through an email or whether that's through Twitter or whether that's on the phone, you have to be polite. We have to be courteous. People rarely listen to the words that you're saying when they are being shouted at them. You're not going to make any sort of difference by getting on Twitter and calling the governor of Oregon an asshole or telling the governor of Massachusetts that he's fucking corrupt and needs to be fucking gone. We want people to take us seriously. I know a lot of people think they're doing a lot of good by getting real loud and yelly, but you're honestly not helping the conversation or our perception to the public in any capacity. And I understand that this is a very emotional subject for people. This is something that is very, very personal and near and dear to our hearts. And I know it's really easy to get mad and angry and yelly when people kind of attack that. But publicly, we have to maintain our composure a little bit. This goes for Twitter. This goes for emails. This goes for phone calls. This goes for speaking to the public news media. If you're at a hearing and the news media wants to talk to you, be polite and as respectful as possible. There is literally no need to start yelling at local news stations. We cannot become the Antifa of vaping. It's unnecessary to have such a militant approach to this. You're not winning anybody over to your side, man. So compose yourself, be polite, be courteous, be respectful, and you will be amazed at how people respond to that. Number two. It just irritates me to no end to see YouTubers and vendors sending me emails and putting in videos, links to petitions. I've ranted about this before and I'll say it again, petitions are actually useless. They accomplish nothing in the United States of America. Don't promote, spread, share, sign, 
any petitions. They have never been effective, and especially in 2019, where we are right now, the state of tobacco control in the United States, a petition is going to accomplish nothing, 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 less than nothing, zero. An argument could be made that they're actually harmful because people will sign petitions and then go, yep, I did a thing, I did my part, let's, let's go back to vaping now. They give people the feeling that they did something when they actually did nothing. So I'm begging you, please, please, Please stop with the petitions. And you might even be asking, well, if we can't sign petitions, then what are we supposed to do? Well, we will get to that in just a minute. Number three, only use facts. And I know that seems like a real simple thing, like, of course, we're only gonna use facts. The problem is a lot of people are out there not using facts. Before you share anything on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or any social media, before you share that article, read the entire article, please. There have been many times, many times where I was close to posting something on Twitter. I was close to retweeting something on Twitter and then I actually read the entire article and it was not something that I should have been posting on Twitter. It was not something I should have been posting anywhere. It's, it's critically important right now to be as well informed as you possibly can and the only way you're gonna get informed it's gonna take reading. Read, read, read. Articles, studies, articles, studies. Read it, read it, absorb it, use facts. In fact, what I'm gonna do is down in the description of this video, I'm just gonna put a whole mess of my favorite links. This is stuff that I have been saving over the last few years that I like to use when I'm sort of in a discussion about tobacco harm reduction on the internet. Some people would call that arguing. I like to call it having a discussion. Additionally, this kind of goes into that same use facts area. And this is really more of just a personal thing, I guess. But try not to use or share or spread odd looking graphics that people have done. I've noticed there's a large amount of people on Instagram that are sharing these sort of kind of thrown together infographics that generally just make us look like flat earther conspiracy theory people. Not a good look for harm reduction advocates to be sharing that kind of stuff. And this is why I, I hate Instagram for advocacy and sharing information because you can't fit the entire argument of our side into one little one inch by one inch square on Instagram. So when you're having a discussion with someone, facts, data, links, articles, scholarly reports, they do exist and you can utilize them. Number four. Now this is really just a tip for anybody that's utilizing Twitter lately, which seems to be yeah, everybody. When you are tweeting at any elected official, any politician, whether that's a governor or a senator or a representative or anything, and you're trying to get them some information. Recently, a lot of us have been tweeting at different governors, trying to tweet them information about the fact that this is a the illicit black market THC cannabis issue and not a nicotine issue. If you're tweeting that sort of information at a politician or at a governor, also tag the local news affiliates in that city or state. They're really easy to find on the internet. They all have Twitters and they all regularly check those Twitters for news and updates and things like this. So if I'm trying to tweet at Gretchen Whitmer about how this is not an electronic cigarette liquid nicotine issue and how this is actually a black market cannabis THC issue, and I'm tweeting at her a article from the New York Times or from the the CDC themselves, I will also try to tag all of the local news affiliates in that state. It's important for them to not only get this information, but it's important for them to see that a citizen is trying to tweet this to the governor. They're looking for more information on the topic as well, and we can provide that to them. Number five. So we know petitions are useless, but what is an effective means to getting your voice heard? Phone 
calls. I'll put some links down in the description to this, but it is really very intensely easy to find out who your local representatives are and who your local senators are. Chances are they'll have a Twitter, but what they will also have is a phone number for you to call. Call your representatives and senators on a daily basis. Remember that these politicians, man, they work for you. So if they are not representing your best interests, it is your duty to let them know. On September 12th, of this year, we flooded, flooded the White House with calls, flooded the White House with calls. And we initiated some real change there. We got the White House talking about vaping and how many vapors there are in the United States and how important this issue is to us. We got Donald Trump to tweet the next day almost, kind of changing his stance on vaping. We did that. You guys did that. When we are focused and we are making calls, we can make some real changes. There is no reason right now why any governor of any state should not be hearing from their vaping constituents every single day. There's no reason why any senator who's in favor of banning flavored vapor products should not be hearing from their vaping constituents every single day. And if I have one other little Twitter tip to kind of roll into this, when you are tweeting at a politician, you have to put a word before you mention them. I don't know why, it's just the way Twitter works. So let's say you're tweeting at my California Senator Kamala Harris and you tweet at Kamala Harris, all this stuff. She's actually never going to see that because of the way that Twitter works. You have to put words before you mention them like, you want them to see your tweets, that's just something you're gonna have to do, and it's just a weird Twitter thing, right, that doesn't really make any sense. But once you know that, it can be much more effective at tweeting at your politicians. And I guess lastly, number six. We kinda have to learn to pick our battles a little bit better, I think. Instead of engaging with everyone who has something negative to say about vaping, we need to stick to politicians that need to be educated about vaping in my opinion. It is important that we start swaying public opinion. There's an enormous amount of people in the United States right now, thanks to our own media, that believe that vapor products are just as, if not more harmful than traditional combustible tobacco cigarettes. That, my friends, is the power of misinformation in America. So yes, it's critical for us to communicate this to the public, but you just simply cannot engage with every person on the internet. And this happens a lot when people like our acting FDA commissioner, Ned Sharpless tweet, or when Scott Gottlieb tweets, or when our Surgeon General Jerome Adams tweets. Those people will tweet something about vaping, generally kind of in a negative light. And then everybody, people will just jump in and start commenting and tweeting and commenting and tweeting. And you run across those people that don't have any skin in this race, they're not a vapor, they're not a smoker, and they'll just agree. They'll say, yes, vaping is dangerous, and needs to be banned. And that person is just a regular person and they have like 12 Twitter followers and then that's just what they think. Does it make more sense to be angry and start yelling at that person? Or do we just ignore that person and pick another battle to fight? We've gotta make sure we don't waste time and waste energy getting our message to the wrong people. So yeah, really that's just my advocacy advice, maybe a little bit of etiquette thrown in there as well. Look, we already know we have the facts on our side. We already know we have the science on our side. I think what we need to focus on is two things. This is about tobacco harm reduction. This is about harm reduction in general, which isn't a foreign concept to a lot of these people. And number two, there are millions of us nationwide and we all vote. I think the we vape, we vote hashtag is the most crucial hashtag for this entire movement. And I know it's dumb to say that a movement should have a hashtag, but I do believe that we vape, we vote should be the message that we're sending across the internet. Anyway, I guess that's what I got for today, everybody. Don't lose hope, we're not fucked. Vaping isn't going anywhere. It's too big, it's too popular, and it's too global to just be swept under the rug. We have mountains of science, we have millions 
billions of vapors. And if we continue to move forward and be effective with this grassroots activism, I do believe that vaping will win. I'm damn proud to fight alongside every single one of you. And I promise to never give up until vaping wins, until harm reduction wins. And lastly, as Kevin Skipper used to say, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. Let's get involved. Thank you.